Borealis Mastery Camel Grind is really easy to complete, but it's all about optimization. If you're able to optimize how fast you can collect loot and items that are going to be required for camel challenges, you'll have no trouble whatsoever. And the challenges themselves aren't that hard to complete. Here's how the Borealis Camel Grind plays out. And there's actually two mastery grinds within Zombies, one to unlock the Borealis Camo and another to unlock Bioluminescent. Both grinds have the exact same camel challenges, so once you know how to do one, you can do the other. If you're ever unsure what weapon a game is for, in the menus, it will show you the game it's connected to. Each weapon will have four base camo challenges, unless it's a launcher or melee. In a little bit, we'll talk about every single camo challenge there is and how to complete it. But once you've completed all four base camo challenges on a single weapon, you gain access and can complete the Golden Enigma and Golden Ivory camos. After you've completed a weapon category, let's use for example the Assault Rifles and you've gotten gold on all of the ARs, you can then complete the Zircon Scale and Spinal Husk challenges. Specifically for Modern Warfare 3, once you've completed the Zircon Scale camo and have unlocked it on 36 different weapons regardless of what they are, that means as new DLC weapons are introduced to the game you can pick and choose, once you finish off 36, you're able to work on the Serpentinite camo. Respectively, once you unlock Spinal Husk on any 51 out of the 77 weapons from Modern Warfare 2, you can work on Arachnida. And finally, once you've unlocked Serpentinite on any 36 Modern Warfare 3 weapons and Arachnida on 51 Modern Warfare 2 weapons, you will have finally completed the camo grind and will be rewarded with the Borealis and Bioluminescent camos. Before you actually get to work on the camo grind, you have to unlock and level up each weapon to gain access to camo challenges. Most weapons are unlocked through leveling up in-game, but for a select few, you have to unlock them through the armory. It's a wonderful system that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but you have to complete daily challenges in order to unlock very specific weapons. You have three daily challenges in Multiplayer, Zombies, and Warzone, and don't worry, they actually made one good choice for us. Once you complete your daily challenges, you'll have three bonus challenges that have no limit, so you don't have to wait an entire day in order just to unlock a few more weapons. Thanks Sledgehammer, we really enjoy this one. There is another way to unlock some of these weapons. In Zombies, you're able to find weapons around the map from wall buys, weapon stashes, loot crates, and even the mystery box. And if you loot a weapon that you don't have unlocked yet, all you need to do is exfil and you'll unlock it. To level up your weapons, it's important to have double weapon XP. There are plenty of ways to get them free, whether that's an in-game event, the campaign and zombies story missions, and the most popular and rewarding way is to link your Activision account to YouTube and earn viewership rewards by watching the CDL. And don't worry, you don't actually have to watch the CDL. I always start the stream on a second monitor or even on my phone and will mute it completely while I do something else. If you end up buying the battle pass, you're also able to collect a few double weapon XP tokens from there. And once in a while in game, there's gonna be double weapon XP weekends. The best method to level up weapons has unfortunately changed a few times since launch, and if I was a gambling addict, I'd bet it's going to change a few more times. Pay attention to new methods that get discovered, and in Zombies, farming kills is a great way to level up, but someone thought it was a good idea to add an XP cap. You'll earn lots of XP in Zombies, but eventually, it drastically decreases every time you get around 750 kills or 12,000 XP. Unfortunately, right now there is no in-game scoreboard to keep track of that, so you'll eventually notice you stop leveling up at a consistent rate. And when that happens, you exfil, rinse, and repeat. Efficiency is key. The more camos you can complete at the same time, the faster you unlock the mastery camo. Pay attention to what camo challenges are unlocked at each weapon level. That way, when you reach that weapon level in-game, you can work on those camo challenges right away, making that process just a little bit easier for yourself. If you've already unlocked the Interstellar or Orion Mastery camos in multiplayer, those weapons for zombies will already be leveled up and you can go straight on to camo grinding. The most important part of this grind is learning how to unlock these camos as fast as possible. I want it drilled into your head that it's not difficult to unlock these camos, it's just a tedious process. It's not necessary, but once you start your camo grind, completing your Act 1 missions as you unlock your first few camo challenges, will allow you to use a second insured weapon slot. That means you can choose two weapons of your choice to bring into your matches. If you complete Act 2, you unlock a third slot, so if you ever die out and lose all of your loot, 
you will at least have another custom weapon slot to bring in any weapon that you want, so you don't have to sit there and wait a few hours to continue your grind. You are able to loot weapons and exfil with them. They become contraband, and if you haven't completed the camo challenges on them yet, you can bring them in as a second weapon. I don't recommend relying on this as a valid strategy, because there's over 100 weapons that you have to complete camo challenges on, so if you're spinning the mystery box, the odds aren't in your favor to get the weapon that you need, or even want. And like I said, Insured weapon slots aren't necessary, but having the luxury of two weapons at the start of your game that you can grind camos on right away does speed up the grind that much more. You'll also need lots of ammo mods, aether tools, perca colas, and aether crystals which are all items that you can loot or craft in order to complete camo challenges. Whenever you complete a contract, loot an aether chest, or in the odd times kill an elite zombie, you have a chance of getting some of these items. There is never a guarantee you'll get anything that you need, so securing schematics is really important. Schematics are earned in two ways, by completing contracts or story missions. Completing contracts gives you a small chance of receiving a schematic reward, but each difficulty zone in Urkistan also has different specific schematics that you can unlock from them. These are all the schematics that are specific to the camo grind and where you can unlock them. If a schematic is unlocked only by the story missions, they're guaranteed as long as you've completed all of the act missions required to unlock it. The reason schematics are so important is that you can craft any item as long as you have the crafting recipe. If you need, say, pack-a-punch kills for a camo challenge, you can craft a crystal. And the same goes for ammo mods, perks, and aether tool challenges. Being able to craft items takes away grinding contracts over and over just for a chance of getting an item you need. And keep in mind that schematics are really rare and they aren't guaranteed. So from the start of your camel grind, this is also something that you should be working towards. It's completing contracts and hopefully getting a couple schematics. On the very rare occasion, people will give away duplicate schematics that they find. It's only happened twice to me where someone gave me a Pack-a-Punch crystal and all of the Act 4 specific schematics. I've also been getting a lot of duplicate schematics myself recently, so what I've done is I've just give them away to random people. So let's all start doing that right now. If everyone gives away their duplicate schematics, eventually more people on their camel grinds will be sharing them around. That way it makes finding schematics a little bit easier, especially when someone gives them to you for free. This should go without saying, but not everyone's a PhD in Call of Duty. If you ever find extra ammo mods or some sort of camel grind specific item that you'll need in the future, save it and place it in your stash that way you have access to it later when you actually need them. I know that probably blew your mind and should be self-explanatory. And if it's not yet burned into your memory, this is the biggest part of the camel grind you should always be working on. It's so important to have access to things you need for camos when you actually need them. And I've learned the hard way. It's not fun, so don't waste your perks and ammo mods when you don't need to be using them. Here is how to complete all the contracts in Modern Warfare Zombies, as it's the fastest way to not only get those items that you need, but a great way to find those schematics for crafting recipes. Aether Extractions will have three rockets that will land, and they'll be protected by mercenaries. You'll have to kill off the mercenaries and destroy all three rockets. And don't go in and destroy the rockets right away, because the mercenaries will kill you faster than you can say, hey, Please tone down the SBMM multiplayer. During the contract, a helicopter will come and deploy some more mercenaries. Kill them off, and once you've destroyed all three rockets within the time limit, you'll receive your rewards. The Defend Ground Station contract is pretty similar. There are three seismic reactors you have to interact with, and once you've done that, you can upload the data at the server. You'll have to protect the server upload point from mercenaries, and after you've defended the server for the given time limit, you'll get some more rewards. Delivering the cargo is the easiest contract to complete in the least amount of time. From where you pick up the contract, there will always be a gas station nearby with an armored vehicle. You'll have to take that armored truck and drive it to the helicopter landing zone. At the gas station, there will also be some zombies and mercenaries you might have to kill to get the truck, open the garage door, grab the truck, and drive to the objective. Once you're in the truck, there's going to be a attack helicopter that's trying to destroy you. You should also avoid hitting zombies on the way as well, as it will damage your truck and increase the chance that you fail the contract. To beat the contract, all you got to do is drive the truck through the HLZ. Eliminate the bounty will spawn an elite zombie type you have to find and kill. 
In the easy difficulty zones, you'll either have to kill a mangler or mimic, and in the medium and hard zones, you'll have the addition of disciples as well. These elite zombies that you have to kill in bounty contracts have a little bit more health from what you're used to, but they basically are the exact same thing as killing other boss zombies. The escort contract has a plane that drops in an aether tank you have to escort to three different rifts. You must stay in close proximity in order for the tank to move, and in the meantime, you have to keep the tank's health above 0% and protect it from zombies. After all three rifts have been completed, the tank will launch a rocket into the sky, completing the contract. Outlast Locate and activate the PND. In a building near the contract you activated, there will be a PND you have to activate it. You have to stay within the area glowing purple, and make sure the progress bar reaches 100%. If for any reason you leave the area, the progress bar will start decreasing and go down back to zero. Zombies, hellhounds, and depending on what difficulty zone you're in, manglers and disciples will all attack you in the meantime. The spore control contract will have you destroy six spores. In order to damage these spores, you must take the inhibitor devices from the marked boxes, place them in the radius of each spore, and once thought out, destroy them. Once you've destroyed all six, you can reap your rewards. Finally, there is the raid weapon stashes, which are very similar to Outlast contracts. You drill the safe, and as the progress bar works its way to 100, zombies will attack you. Unlike the other reward rifts, where you normally get some sort of item that you'll potentially need in the future, each weapon stash that you do will have two weapons and maybe some extra equipment on the inside, which is a great way to take weapons and exfil with them to unlock them if you don't have them yet. For contracts, as you gain experience with them, you'll learn which ones you like the best and find fastest to complete. There are a few other ways that you're able to earn some items that you'll need for Borealis. Aether chests will spawn in random locations around Urzikstan, and if you want guaranteed Aether chest locations, you'll need to defeat Aether nests and infested strongholds. In principle, they're the exact same thing, except strongholds are a little bit more difficult but have more Aether chests as a reward. Inside, there's going to be cysts on the walls that you need to shoot and destroy. As you do this, zombies will get aggravated and attack you, and once you finally manage to destroy all the cysts and take out all the zombies in your way, you'll get a bunch of Aether nest chests, and inside will be tons of items that you'll need for camel challenges. There is also weird purple orbs that you'll see around the map. You can shoot these and they'll bounce around in the air. After you shoot it enough times, you'll destroy it and receive either an aether tool or some random ammo mod. When it comes to unlocking camos, there's very specific contracts you should be completing to farm as many kills as possible. Unless you need a specific challenge, you should always be grinding in the easy difficulty zones as well. Zombies here have less health, which means pretty much every gun can kill relatively fast. Just like the best ways to level up, the best ways to unlock camos have and will continue to change. Right now, the best way to grind camos isn't even a contract. It's using exfils to spawn in endless hordes of zombies. You're able to call in as many as you want, and in between each exfil, there's only a cooldown of 30 seconds. The best part is, is you can complete basically every camo challenge here, except for kills in the medium or hard difficulty zones, disciple, mimic, and mercenary kills, and that's pretty much it. And there's technically one exfil location in the medium difficulty zones, but too many elite zombies spawn there distracting you from killing zombies and actually getting camos efficiently. The exfils that you will be grinding at will also spawn hellhounds and manglers, but they don't have a lot of health and aren't a problem to deal with at all, so that's also great for camo challenges. Farming exfils have been very popular since the launch of the game, but there was a brief period of time where they removed the ability to infinitely call them in. There are two other methods, if that ever happens again, to infinitely spawn in zombies. During the spore control contracts, if you destroy four of the six spores, and actually leave the last two spores in close proximity to each other, as long as your inhibitors are active and you don't destroy the spores, zombies won't stop spawning. In the final Act 1 mission where you have to save Dr. Jensen, which you can do at any time by the way, at the very end of the mission, where you have to exfil, as long as you don't get on the helicopter, you can farm as many kills as you want on the helipad. The only downside to this strategy is that the entire mission takes place in a medium difficulty zone, so if you don't have your weapon upgraded, you're gonna have a hard time. You're also able to farm as much XP as you want in this mission if you don't have your weapons upgraded. 
If you follow the exact path I take from the start of the mission to the helipad, you can reach the helipad really fast and have it to where Dr. Jensen is on the helicopter pretty much right away. And instead of you getting the kills with your weapon, you can find turret circuit boards, which will always spawn in these exact same locations. No matter how many times you play this mission, they don't change. And you just place these circuit boards in the turret and each kill the turret gets counts as XP towards whatever weapon you're holding. If any of these methods for farming camos change or get patched, the best contracts to farm for as many zombies kills as possible is going to be the Spore, Escort, and Raid weapon stash. Now that we know the best methods to find all the items that we need to unlock camos and the best strategies to unlock camos, here is every challenge in the game and how to complete them. The first handful are so easy to complete, you just need to perform some sort of action while killing zombies. So I call these the active challenges. All weapons have a challenge that requires 250 kills. We are doing the majority of our camo grinding in the easy difficulty zone, so all weapons will kill relatively fast, except for two that everyone's going to struggle with, the Joker and the Stormender. We all know and love the Joker, and the Stormender does basically no damage towards zombies. There is a way to work around this without having to upgrade your weapons. As long as you don't have a throwing knife equipped, you can melee zombies and kill them in two hits, and each kill you get counts towards your camo challenges, which can also be done for other weapons if you are struggling with them. Later on, you'll also be able to use this exact same strategy for Zircon Scale and Serpentinite, as well as the Spinal Husk Arachnida Camo Challenges. Some weapons will need Tax Stance kills. Tax Stance is a mechanic where you aim down sight, and you either hit down on your D-pad or your designated keybind, and you'll hold your gun at an angle. You won't have the best accuracy in the world, so laser sights do help. Hipfire kills will have you get 250 kills without aiming down sight. The closer you are to your zombies, the more accurate you'll be, and the faster you'll get through these camos. Similarly, point blank kills require you to be a meter away from the zombies when you kill them. Depending on what strategy you're using, you do have an increased chance of going down if there's a lot of zombies. If you're struggling with point blanks, Use decoy grenades to distract the zombies temporarily so you can get up close without even worrying about going down and get some easy point blank kills. You can also use Aether Shroud as a field upgrade so zombies can't see you for a short period of time allowing you to get even more kills without the threat of going down. Headshot or critical kills are as easy as it gets. You aim for the head and each kill that you get that's a headshot will count and headshots on all other zombies types will also count towards your camo progression. If you want a little assistance aiming for the head, drink the perk Deadshot Daiquiri. This perk acts as a strengthened aim assist that auto locks you onto the heads of zombies, just making headshots that much easier. These next few challenges all require the same strategy to complete as fast as possible. First, you'll want the largest ammo capacity magazine attachment, and then you want to group as many zombies together as possible. For five kills without releasing the trigger, it's as simple as that. When the zombies are all grouped up together and you have those large magazines, killing 5 zombies without letting go is simple. You'll also have to get 10 kills with under 5 seconds. Some weapons may need a few upgrades if you're struggling to fit those 10 kills in 5 seconds even with grouping up the zombies. If you're ever unsure about getting 10 kills within 5 seconds, you know you did it properly when you see the slaughter medal pop up on your screen. It's a great way to keep track of how many you've done and if you're completing what's required of you. Getting 20 consecutive kills in a row without taking damage can be frustrating. Some people think you don't have to get hit by zombies, but you'll also have to avoid taking any damage regardless of where it comes from. Hellhound fire if you kill them and they explode, mangler cannon fire, and even fall damage all stop your consecutive kill streak. There is also a medal for getting 30 kills in a row without taking damage called Jackrabbit. It's another great way to keep track of how many kills in a row you've gotten without taking damage, and some unfortunate people are having this camo challenge bug where they're getting 20 kills without taking damage at all, and then they'll continue to get another 20 kills so they'll get 40 kills without taking any damage, but they'll still only get one progression. If you do end up noticing this, purposely get hit by a zombie, after your first 20 kills of course. It seems counterintuitive, but it's a way to reset your counter without taking damage, so your next 20 kills that you get, you know will count as another progression, rather than having it bug out. Snipers have a challenge where you need to kill three zombies with a single shot. 
This isn't hard to do in the easy difficulty zones. It's so easy to do your snipers don't even need to be upgraded. All you need to do is group up the zombies to where they're all close together and shoot. If you're having a hard time with this challenge because the zombies aren't grouping up the way that you want them to, bring them around a corner of a fence or a wall. They'll line up almost like they're getting in a single file line. These next three challenges require you to equip something on your loadouts. Some weapons need 250 kills with full attachments, which means all you need is five attachments regardless of what they are. For zombies, if you're looking for helpful attachments, however, equip ones that will increase your mobility, like sprint to fire and aim down sight speed. You'll lose a little bit of recoil control and you won't be as accurate, but who cares, we're fighting zombies. It's also a good idea to take magazines with the largest ammo capacity, that way you don't have to reload as much. And if you're worried about your reload time taking too long, there is the perk of cola, Speed Cola, which does exactly just that. You'll also need to get 100 kills against zombies shortly after using your field upgrade. Only use Aether Shroud for this camo challenge. That's it. It charges the fastest, and when you use it, it doesn't kill any zombies in the process. Gripping up as many zombies as possible will allow you to be efficient and breeze through this challenge. Once you activate Aether Shroud, you only have a few seconds where kills count. My rule of thumb is once you activate Aether Shroud, the only kills that count are when it's actually active. In reality, you may have a few extra seconds once it stops, but I like to play it a little bit safer, so I know I'm actually making the progress. And of course, once your Aether Shroud stops, don't stop killing the zombies, just in case that timer extends past the use of Aether Shroud. This is pretty much the exact same camo challenge, and that's killing 100 zombies that are affected by your tactical grenade. I'm still unsure if decoys count for this challenge, during my camel grind, it seemed like sometimes it was counting and others it seemed like it didn't. If that's the case, use stun grenades instead. Regardless, all you gotta do is kill zombies that are affected by your tacticals. And all tacticals will count towards this challenge, I just use decoy and stuns because they're the best. You already know what to do, group up as many zombies as possible and throw your tactical, and once they're affected, get those kills. It's also really important to be by a munitions crate, that way you can refill your tacticals and keep the camel grind going. The reason I tried to emphasize how important completing contracts and looting was, is because these next few camel challenges all require you to have an ammo mod, aether tool, perca cola, or aether crystal equipped. Let's start off with your elemental kills. All you'll need is the correct ammo mod equipped for the type of element you're trying to get kills with. And don't worry, you don't need the zombies to be actively affected by an element, for example, to be on fire or frozen for those kills to count. If that was the case, this challenge would take forever and a day to complete. All you need is just to get kills with the ammo mod equipped. If you need fire kills, you need the napalm burst ammo mod. For frost kills, equip cryo freeze. Electric kills require dead wire, and the toxic kills require you to have brain rot. With Brain Rot, you're going to turn zombies into friendlies, and they'll go all run off and kill other zombies, and each kill that, that friendly zombie gets won't count towards your camo challenge. The only kills that will count come from your gun itself. There is one ammo mod that isn't required for any camo challenge, and that's Shatter Blast. For some reason, if there's ever a challenge in the future where we need explosive elemental kills, you'll know exactly what to use. Kills while four perks are equipped. It doesn't matter what four perks you use, as long as you have four active, that means you've actually drank in them, and they're not just sitting in your rucksack. All kills you get with four perks will of course count. And if you don't have any perks saved from your stash, or you can't craft any from schematics, around the map there's going to be lots of perk machines. They do cost a couple thousand points per each one, so you might have to complete a few contracts along the way, and hopefully you'll find some extra perks while doing that as well. Getting 250 kills with a rare or higher rarity weapon requires you to use Aether tools on your weapons to upgrade them. The Aether tools that count are rare, epic, and legendary, or if you know them by their colors, blue, purple, and orange. It should go without saying, but if you're getting kills with a white or green rarity weapon, you won't be making any progression towards this camo challenge. You can also find higher rarity weapons around the map from wall buys, loot stashes, and mystery boxes, but when you exfo with these weapons, they lose all of their upgrades, so that includes weapon rarity and pack-a-punch. Hopefully they end up changing this in the future so that we can keep those upgrades. When you need to get kills in tier 2 or tier 3 zones, the higher upgrades you have on your weapons, the faster you will be killing zombies. 
A rule of thumb I have is if I'm in tier 2 completing contracts or camo challenges, I have a minimum of at least one Aether Tool upgrade and one Pack-a-Punch upgrade on my weapon. Some weaker weapons like marks and rifles may even need more, and you don't have to use upgrades on your weapons in tier 2, but without any upgrades, it just makes the grind that much more difficult than it needs to be. To wrap up the base camo challenges, we have to kill specific special or elite enemy types. Hellhound kills are the easiest, as hellhounds are the most common non-zombies you'll see around. They spawn in high numbers during pretty much every contract, especially outlasts and escorts, and you only need to kill 30 of them, so it's not like it's asking you to do a lot. And you can also have them spawn in at exfils if you're farming other camo challenges. If you are struggling to find them on your own, just do some of those contracts because they'll spawn at all levels of progress, and it's really easy. Mimics, on the other hand, are the elite zombie that you're the least likely to find around the map. Not only are they only a guaranteed spawn in one contract, that's of course the bounty contracts. And the worst part is you're not guaranteed to get a mimic as your bounty that you need to hunt down and kill in your contract. However, you are able to cancel contracts, so if you're sick and tired of getting manglers or disciples over and over again, you can farm for mimics that way. However, there is one guaranteed way to get mimics to spawn around the map, and that's in infested strongholds. In tier 1 easy zones, you're only going to have one spawn, but in tier 2 medium zones, you're going to have two spawns, which is quite nice. All you have to do is pop a couple spores and force the mimics to spawn if they haven't already spawned, which majority of the time they are. You just kill the two mimics, and you're ready to go to the next infested stronghold to continue farming them. Of course, you can find the rare Mimic running around the medium difficulty zone by itself, but it's pretty hard to find. They do, unfortunately, commonly spawn in the Tier 3 hard mode. And the reason that's unfortunate is because unless you have a max upgraded weapon, there's no point in going to the hard difficulty zone to try to kill Mimics alone. You might as well just do the Infested Strongholds. You'll also have to kill off Manglers, and they spawn at Exfils right now. Every time you call in a helicopter, it's common for a few of them to spawn in each time. And you're in the easy difficulty zone, so it's not like it's that hard to kill them because they got some pretty low health. In tier 1, you're also able to run the escort contracts which guarantee manglers spawn in. There's a really nice exploit right now. In the tier 2 medium difficulty zone, if you are doing an outlast contract, once you reach 55% on your progress meter, every time without fail, you're going to spawn in a boss zombie. That means you can get your meter up to 56%, leave the building so it drops to 54, step back in to get it to 55, 56, leave, and you can rinse and repeat this cycle and spawn in as many elite zombies as you want. The only two elite zombies that spawn are manglers and disciples, which is great for disciple kills as well because you can use this exact same strategy for when you have to kill disciples. You should have already taken note that we're in the medium difficulty zone, so you will need a few weapon upgrades. Unfortunately, if you don't have any weapon upgrades, there is only one way to get a Disciple in the easy difficulty zone. North above the military base, there's a small house on a beach, and in the corner there's a radio that you can interact and send a transmission. Once you send this transmission, you're going to spawn a few zombies and a guaranteed Disciple, but you can only do this once per match and only one Disciple spawns, so unfortunately you're going to have to do a lot of your grinding in the medium difficulty zone. And the Outlast contract isn't the only way you can spawn Disciples as well. During the Escort mission, Disciples will try and stop you, as well as you can pick up bounties to force a Disciple spawn. And even though you can do it, it doesn't mean that you should. The Disciples that you spawn from bounties have so much more health than you're going to be used to that it honestly takes a basically max upgraded weapon to kill them within any reasonable amount of time. The final enemy type that you'll have to kill are Mercenaries. And it's pretty lame that a zombie's camel grind has you kill something that aren't zombies, but there are plenty of ways to find mercenaries around the map. And you only need to kill 50 of them, so it's not like you have to do a lot. You'll be able to find these mercenary camps around the map, and they'll have around 10 mercenaries you can kill. And once you've killed all of them off, you can loot a chest and grab a mercenary stronghold keycard. These strongholds will have anywhere from 15 to 30 more mercs that you can kill. And once you drill the safe, you'll also be able to get a Legacy Stronghold card, which will allow you to attack the Legacy Stronghold. I don't recommend doing this solo. I died so fast from the attack helicopters, 
So if you don't want to do any of these strongholds and risk dying over and over again because you're solo or you're not prepared, remember there's also two contracts that spawn a lot of mercs that you have to fight, and those being the Defend Ground Station and Aether Extract contracts. That concludes all of the base camo challenges. The completionist camos are just as easy to unlock. For each weapon, for the Golden Enigma or Golden Ivory camos, you'll have to get 100 kills in a single match and then exfil. That's it. And if you've been efficient with your camo grinding, and you've completed all of your base camos within the same match and as long as you have more than 100 kills, when you exfil, with the requirement that all four base camo challenges are done, you will get that Golden Ivory or Golden Enigma camo. In the odd case that you didn't get 100 kills in your match when you finished your camo challenges for whatever reason, all you gotta do is get 100 kills which can easily be done by farming a few contracts or calling in a couple exfils and killing off all the zombies and then boom, your golden challenges are complete. Each weapon in the game will also require you to get 300 pack-a-punch kills to unlock the zircon scale or spinal husk camos. It's pretty self-explanatory, as long as your weapon is pack-a-punched, each kill will count. You can upgrade your weapons using aether crystals that you've been saving from missions or crafting from schematics, and if you don't have any, you still can complete a couple contracts, save up a minimum of 5,000 points, head to any pack punch machine, and upgrade your weapon that way. The final camel challenge, after completing all of your spinal husk and zircon scales, is going to be killing 10 special or elite zombies. Mimics, manglers, disciples, and the abomination all count towards this challenge. As I just said, just because you can doesn't mean you should, and that applies when it comes to the Abomination. There's no point in trying to upgrade all of your weapons and fight it when there's so many faster ways to complete this camel challenge. The manglers spawn all the time in tier 1 exfils, with low health making the camel challenge that easy to complete. As a bonus, it also only takes a couple exfils to complete a camel challenge per weapon. If you don't want to farm exfils and want to use a strategy that goes a little bit faster, as long as your weapons are upgraded, you can use the medium difficulty outlast contract 55% strategy to spawn in 10 plus manglers and disciples in only a few seconds and fly through weapon challenges. Worst case scenario, you can complete any other contract that spawns these enemies like the escorts and bounties. And that is all the camo challenges that you have to complete in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. Then, when you unlock Serpentinite on 36 different weapons and Arachnida on 51, you'll finally unlock the Borealis and Bioluminescent camos. And that is everything you will need to know to complete the Modern Warfare Zombies Mastery Camo Grinds. As I said, hopefully it's drilled into your heads by now. The camo challenges are really easy to complete themselves. The tedious part is just finding those items that are required to complete specific camo challenges. If there are any changes to the grind, I will have a pinned comment at the top of the comment section with any changes that you'll need to know of for the camel grind that will include changes to the camel challenges themselves or changes to the best methods to grind. I hope you guys did enjoy all the tips and tricks to unlock the Borealis and Bioluminescent camos. Good luck on your mastery grinds, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.